Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley. This is Insidium's Top Tip Tuesday. And on today's video, we're going to be using Nexus, so GPU particle simulations, to create this really nice stylized wind tunnel effect. So we'll start that clock and we'll begin. In our scene then we have our racing car and our particle emitter firing out these arrow particles. If we go to the emitter settings, you can see we're in rate mode, 200 frames lifespan, and the particles are born 60 frames per uh, 60 particles per second with a speed of 240. So we want these to avoid our uh, geometry, which is going to give us this wind tunnel effect. So the way we're going to do that is first of all make some low poly dummy geometry of this car. If you have a look in the object manager, you can see that our car is actually um, a series of separate objects. They're in a null which is in an XP join object, which is joining them all together. So what we'll do is we'll use volume meshing to mesh this XP join to make it more efficient. So we'll go to the generators menu and we'll bring in an open VDB mesher. In the open VDB mesher, let's drag in our XP join car into the objects list. And let's just make that car invisible for a second. So here is our mesh, not quite right yet. We can fix this by going and having the XP join highlighted and we'll change the mesh mode from surface to points, which creates this. Let's hit MB to see the lines. We can make it lower poly. Let's increase the voxel size to say six, which will make fewer polygons. That looks all right. Let's hit NA to hide those lines. And now let's remove some of this kind of inflated effect with some filters. We'll go to filters and we'll use filters and we could, let's just get rid of that default median. We're gonna bring in a curvature, highlight the curvature, increase the iterations a little bit to smoothen it out, good. And then we'll reduce the overall volume with an offset filter, let's bring that in, highlight the offset, increase the width. Now let's make our join car visible again and we'll increase this width until we've got that car kind of poking through. So yeah, look, we can see it poking through now. So let's just back off that a bit. So something like that's going to work well. Great. So let's make this dummy geometry editable. We'll select it and just hit C to make it editable. Now it's a polygon object and we'll change the name and call it dummy car. Right. So let's make the dummy car invisible. We don't need to look at it but that's what we're going to use to calculate our avoidance. Right, let's get that sorted. So we'll go to Nexus. We'll bring in an XP, uh, an NX avoid. Here it is. And it says, what object do you want to avoid? So let's bring in our dummy car. We'll leave everything in default. It's set to change direction, which is what we want. So when it detects that geometry, the particles will change direction. Yep, and it avoids and doesn't intersect. Right, we want these particles to be rotated so they're kind of in the direction of travel. We'll do that by going to the emitter, extended data. We need to use rotation, click that, and we want the rotation to be tangential. There we go. And now they're gonna be pointing in the direction of travel. Cool. So they're avoiding it, but then they're flying off. We want them to, to wrap around. So we'll do that with another modifier. Let's go to Nexus, and we're going to bring an NX Attract. Now, NX Attract means that the particles will be attracted to this target here. So let's go to our NX Attract. Uh, we're going to change it to Force Mode. If you're mixing multiple modifiers, it's always better to have them in Force Type rather than Velocity. And let's put this Force way up to, like I don't know, 200 force and now those particles are going to be really attracted to this attractor but they're still avoiding our car yep and now they're moving around now we want to avoid this so we'll do that by restricting the effects of this attractor to a field let's go to the attract fields we'll bring in a box field and we'll just get this to kind of surround our car so it's only going to be attracting whilst it's uh, going around the car. So something like, let's just adjust that a little bit, something like that maybe. Let's make it taller with the handles. We can move that up a bit. And we don't need this much of an inner fall off in that. Look, it, just, it can just be something like that. So now, uh, as soon as they come outside of this uh, box, they're no longer attracted, so they don't 
just keep congregating around the target. Right, so finally, we want to make this end bit a bit less messy. We want them to kind of carry on their plus Z direction. So we can do that with another modifier. Let's go to Nexus, and we're going to bring in an NX direction. Here it is. Let's go to the Object tab. Now, by default, this is going to be perfect for us. By default, it's going to use the modifier's rotation, and it will always force the particles to go in the plus Z of the direction modifier. And the plus Z is going in the direction that we want. So by default, that's perfect for us. Let's hit play. And this is going to force those particles in that direction. So despite all the other modifiers, it's kind of making them go in that plus Z. And this is working really nicely. But you might think that the effects of it are a little bit too strong. So what you could do is reduce the strength of this direction just to bring back a little bit more of that uh, uh, movement in our particles. So you can play around with these settings until you've got something that you like. So the look comes alive, finally, by adding a trail behind these particles. So let's go to Generators. We'll bring in an XP trail. It says, which emitter do you want to make a trail from? We've only got one. Let's drag it in. Just leave it default. And now you'll see that we get these really cool traced trails, which are creating our aerodynamic wind tunnel lines.